Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, aka J Phoenix, and it's going to be your astrology forecast for Monday, August 21st of 2023. I'm cutting it close here. I gotta leave in like 20 minutes to go to work, and I'm cutting it really close. I didn't make this last night because I was like super, super sleepy, but I trust that you guys had a wonderful weekend. I had a really good weekend. Uh, very nice, just getting clarity, chill, relax. I felt very zen on Saturday, and then yesterday I was off, so I was just kind of chilling and stuff. And Atlanta United won, and I didn't think they were going to win. So, yeah, go Atlanta United. And, uh, yeah, I hope that you guys had a wonderful weekend as well. Let's hop into this week, and um, things are heating up. Things are definitely heating up. So let's go ahead and take a look at it, shall we? So, well, we do have that moon, of course, here in Libra at 24 degrees, getting ready to make that conjunction to the south node and oppose the north node, right? And it also will be coming into a square with, you know, with uh, Pluto later on. Sorry. It'll be coming in with the square with Pluto later on today. So definitely going to be some challenging emotional energies, you know, conjuncting the south node. We're definitely going to be... There's going to be this want to try and balance things out and trying to, you know, find the harmony and things. But the South Node here is going to be it's going to definitely show where the disharmony is. And you don't want to just like try and overcompensate for this moon, especially when it goes into Scorpio. You know, it's like you definitely don't want to overcompensate because these nodes are still squaring Pluto. And the moon meets up with this energy today. Yeah, it's a two-degree orb, but it's still prevalent. It's still there. And when the moon meets up with this, it's just going to add a little bit more umph, a little bit more pizzazz to it, if you will, especially since it's in Libra. Whereas the moon in Libra, like I said, it's been looking for peace. It's looking for harmony. It's looking to balance things out. It's looking for us to we want to feel balanced. We're, we're wanting to feel the peace. But with the, on the south node, we may not necessarily feel it. So be, don't like overstretch yourself to other people today to the point where it does feel like you're giving a lot more of yourself. And you don't want to like overstretch yourself because then, of course, you may experience that lack of appreciation from them with that square to Pluto that the moon is going to be experiencing today. And then it'll eventually go void, of course, for like the last, you know, two degrees it if you, if you will and that, that's the interesting thing about this void these uh, void of course moons that we've been having uh sometimes it lasts a little bit longer the void of course essentially means that whatever planet is you know at the highest degree after the moon passes that degree that means it's not making any more aspects to anything else right as far as like major energies right so when the moon does make this square over to Pluto, the good thing is, is that it does sextile the sun, though, which is here at 28 degrees of Leo, right? So we're almost through with Leo season. We're about to enter into Virgo season. And, you know, this Leo season, especially this last week, has been, you know, wanting us to feel more invigorated, wanting us to feel more of that vitality and to really bring that forward, to show our love, show our passion. It's like, yo, do you have a vitality for life? Are you like really feeling alive right now? Is there something in your life that you are striving for that does make you feel that roar, that, 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 that deeper sense, that deeper fire, that ever present fire, because this is like it's you know it's fixed fire, right? So it's something that is ever present, it's always there, right? So even though this moon is going to be on the south node, even though it's going to be squaring Pluto, which is not, it's a challenging aspect, right? Where it's like, you know, it, there could be this feeling where some people feel like they almost have to cater to certain norms or have to cater and over themselves to certain people because society kind of dictates that that's what you have to do. Well, whereas it's going to be opposing this North Node in Aries with Chiron there, which is definitely asking us to really become more into ourself and really show our vitality and like really believe in ourselves, if you will, um, to not be afraid to be different, to not be afraid to be a leader. Cause that's the thing about Aries too. But Chiron is there. So there's also an aspect here where, and you got to remember, like, 
Pluto is squaring all this energy too. So there's this aspect here where it's like, you know what? Am I going to really, I'm trying to put this into words. It's hard to put it into words, honestly, because that's honestly kind of how this energy is. I can use metaphors and similes and allegories on how to put this into words, but it's kind of hard to put into words. It's like we're all wanting to like try and find the leader, you know, I'm trying to kind of be a leader of our lives. Not that we have to necessarily lead people, but just become a leader in our own lives to kind of take the reins back, right? If you're, like, take, for example, if there is someone that, you know, feels like they're kind of lagging behind and, you know, but they're wanting to maybe eat better, maybe they're wanting to exercise, maybe they're wanting to, you know, actually do that project that they've always wanted to do and stuff like that. Being a leader is taking the reins of your own life and taking some personal responsibility and actually moving towards that place with purposeful action. And that's what this is all about. We can all be leaders in our life. That doesn't mean that we have to be leading 10 people or a huge company or a sports team or a family, but we can still become leaders in our own right. So this moon on top of the South Node squaring Pluto opposing this energy while the sun is sextiling it mind you too because that, that that will be happening too there's definitely this feeling where it's like you know how can we become a leader in our own life what can we do to lead ourselves to the promised land to lead ourselves to a better tomorrow to a better future even when things seem dire even when things seem uh out of sorts even when things seem like you know, how we're going to get through this, because in many ways, that's what this is. It's a lot of stressful energy. We're trying to figure out how the hell are we going to get through this, right? Now, of course, Mercury here is about to go retrograde in just a few days. I don't think it's tomorrow. I want to say it's Wednesday that it actually happens, but like, I'm pretty sure this is happening on Wednesday. Yeah, it's Wednesday. Like, uh, yeah, it's Wednesday. That's a Wednesday aspect. That's why That's why I had a feeling. So, yeah. So, we're going to have Mercury that's going to retrograde on Wednesday at 21 degrees. Mind you, it's not going to get to the trine to Uranus. It's wanting to have that aha moment, but it's not going to get to the trine of Uranus. It's not going to oppose Neptune, even though that energy was building, too. So, we're not going to get that opposition. So, we're not going to get that reality check. So it's like we're try we're, all, we're like almost to the doorway, if you will, and then we can't even. It feels like we can't quite go through the doorway. Almost, this is about, and we're gonna have to recalibrate with the Virgo energy. This is definitely going to come down to us thinking more about, you know, our our habits, our our daily routine, you know, how we organize things. It's going to come back to all that. It's a major reality check. You know what I mean? So now, of course, we also have Mars building up to the opposition with Neptune. Remember last week I told you that we have a lot of things that are about to pop off. The Mars opposed Neptune. Mercury's about to retrograde. Venus, which is actually squaring Jupiter right now. So that one is already that one's already kicked off. And then, of course, we're going to have the Sun, which is going to shift into Virgo, too, during all this. So... There's a and that's gonna and that's gonna happen on the day that Mercury retrogrades is when the sun shifts into Virgo. So there's a lot of shifting energy, and there's going to be a lot of focus on Virgo town. We're gonna be in Virgo town. I mean, yeah, March is gonna be moving into Libra Sid, but it's about to move into Virgo town and it's about to move into like retrograde town. Mercury about to retrograde, Uranus is about to retrograde, Venus is halfway through its retrograde. It's a very confusing time, to say the least. The, how do we balance out all these energies? The great thing about this, though, is that at least the energy is pretty evenly distributed. Yeah, we don't have anything in Sag. You know what I'm saying? We don't have anything in Sag. The moon's about to come into Scorpio, so it's like most of the energy that's in these energies is just the transient energy that is the moon, right? Mars will be coming into Libra soon. This energy is pretty well dispersed, you know what I'm saying? Except for, like, really the Cancer Gemini and then the uh, Scorpio um, Sagittarius. But other than that, the energy is pretty well dispersed. 
So it's like we have this energy on this side, which most of it's retrograde, right? Pluto, Saturn, Neptune, and Chiron all are retrograde with the North Node over here, too. And then, of course, you have Uranus and Jupiter and Taurus, which are slowing down, right? So you have the last part of the Zodiac and the first part of the Zodiac all kind of coalesced. And then over here, you have you have the Leo energy, the Virgo, the Libra, mainly these two energies right here with Leo and Virgo. So there's this element where we are having to kind of go more inward when it comes to these other energies, when it comes to the, you know, Capricorn and Pisces and Aries energy, it's soon to be Taurus, right? So like society at large in many ways, Pisces are spirituality, Aries are individuality, Taurus are values. All of this stuff is about to be retrograde. And then we have to somehow figure out how to navigate the social aspect of it with the Leo energy, Virgo, and soon to be Libra when Mars comes into Libra, right? And that's the thing about this. It's, it is it is a pretty confusing time. It's a weird time because we have energies that are slowing down. The only thing that's really moving fast is Mars, and Mars is about to go into Libra where it doesn't like to be in. So we're definitely going to be wanting to, we're going to be acting more from a place of trying to maintain some balance and harmony throughout all this, which is honestly probably a blessing because all these energies that are about to be retrograde and people are going to be a lot more sensitive and people are going to be channeling things from their subconscious that especially if they're not, you know, if they're not aware of you know their intricacies, they're not aware of their wants and their desires, but they're just subconsciously acting on them and stuff, or subconsciously acting on suppressed emotions, subconsciously acting on suppressed desires and wants, and then it can kind of and then as it bubbles to the surface, it translates into something that is way off kilter to what they really want deep within their soul and what their spirit is guiding them to do. It's going to be a confusing and weird time. So that's why it's super important to know yourself and to know your value. I think that's why a lot of this is coming down to the Leo Taurus squares that we have been dealing with, right? And then, of course, we get that recalibration. I'm telling you, the Mars moving into Libra and Mercury retrograding in Virgo is a blessing in disguise. Because with all these other retrogrades that are happening trying to find we're going to be looking to find some balance in all this and how to act in a way that does promote a little bit more peace if you will and also just going back and looking at it's like okay how have i organized my day-to-day -day reality does this make sense to where i'm trying to go in my life does this make sense to where I want to vibrate in my life does this is have me vibrate higher or does it have me vibrate lower okay if it's lower or if it's not where's that where I where I want to be, what do I need to do to change it? Do I need to blow everything up and change everything in my life right now to feel better? Or can I just do this incrementally? I'm going to tell you it's probably better to just do it incrementally. I don't think there's really any neat reason to just blow everything up right now because every single person can find something to be grateful for. So every single person has something, someone in their life to be grateful for, you know? And sometimes it's best to just kind of start where you are and then work your way up. It's like we want to have the entire garden. We want to have the entire forest of manifestation, but maybe we just have one flower. Maybe we have a couple of seeds. Maybe we just have the bed. Maybe we have just the bed itself. Maybe we have just the clearing of where we're going to put it, right? Where we're going to put the flower bed, right? Some people may not even have a yard. Some people are just using like a little pot in their apartment. But it comes down to like, what do you have and what can you work with? Because, I mean, I look around where I am right now. Would I like to have like a house with a yard and a dog right now? Yes, I, I would. I have Leo right here. <laughs> I have Leo Bear. But I look around at all of the, the sheer amount of stuff that I have. And I'm grateful that I've been able to accumulate this, right? I am grateful that I've been able to accumulate this. It's like, it's it's incredible just the amount of opulence that we have nowadays. 
just because some things don't necessarily look the way that we want them to look or what we think it should be. It's like, you you should do this thing, and then you should do that thing, and then you should do that thing by this age, and then that thing by this age, and then that thing by this age. That's the that's the funny thing about this, too. It's, it's, it's so crazy. I think it's like all of these different um, expectations that we put on ourselves, too, um, that we need to have things done by a certain age, and then you don't even get your Saturn return until your late 20s going into your 30s, which always, the first Saturn return is always a doozy, you know what I mean? So that's what that whole, you know, that quarter-life crisis is, is the preparation for the Saturn return and realizing, like, hey, you're growing up, you're getting older, people don't give us as much of a fuck anymore if you're not doing as well. People is like, oh, well, you're older. Figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's, that's kind of part of this, too. Um, where in many ways, as a society, we're kind of in that point. But we got to still be able to lean on each other. We still got to be able to help each other. You know, as we move, as the moon goes into Scorpio, it'll move into Scorpio later on in the evening. You know what I'm saying? So, um the Venus uh, Jupiter square is, of course, it's as tight as it pretty much could be. It's really, it's almost exact, but you know that's happening at 15 degrees. You know, um, this sun is making the King Kunks over to Pluto, which is causing that yacht, like I mentioned earlier, where now the sun, the sun is where Venus was when it made its retrograde, when it started its retrograde. So. This is definitely a moment where we're having to kind of dig deep, look within to kind of see how we have manifested our heart in many ways and to see, you know, OK, well, yeah, we had this awkward stare from the Pluto energy as far as like, OK, well, you know, do you fit in with this society? Do you want to fit in a society that's also crumbling and stuff like that? Or do you want to move towards something that's do you want to build something for the future? You know, are, are you wanting to cram yourself into this box, if you will, of something that is already crumbling and dilapidated and no longer is going to be the norm, even though it might take some time for that to actually develop and for us to see it? Or are you living for the future? Are you living? Um, are you looking towards something new? Are you building something new? That's I mean, that's really what this comes down to. So. And remember, yeah, the moon is Scorpio. Yeah, it doesn't really like to be in Scorpio, but at least the south node's not there anymore. So this moon is Scorpio sort of gives us like it's funny what the moon going into Libra now this now that the south node is there. It's almost gonna be like the moon get, gets like a breath of fresh air when it gets to Scorpio, because even though it's gonna start to feel emotions very deeply, you know, it, it's gonna be a little deeper than Libra. You know what I'm saying? At the very least, the south node's not there. Right? So it's not like we have to go to, like, the depth of the melodramatic nature that Scorpio can that Scorpio can have. But you have to understand, when it comes to the melodram melodramatic nature that Scorpio can have, it's Scorpio kind of has to do that. First of all, their 12th house is Libra. Right? So... Their like the whole their whole spiritual nature of Scorpio is kind of dramatic. You know, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of they're looking to have the balance and peace and harmony with the, in the spirit world, and they're look they're balancing those energies. That's the thing. They're balancing the spiritual energies. That's what makes Scorpio such a transformer of energy, right? Because they're balancing literally spiritual energies. They're purging and transforming and transmuting spiritual energies. That's why Scorpio can be so melodramatic sometimes. And that's why sometimes Scorpio will confuse other people's emotions for their own. Even though it's fixed water, you know what I'm saying? If you throw an, if you throw an ice cube into water, it makes it colder. So that's, the, that's the thing about it. So, you know, this moon of Scorpio, yeah, it's definitely going to bring a little bit of the melodrama out, but at least it's not going to be as intense because the south node is not there anymore. So it's like, okay, well, now I can feel these deeper emotions, and maybe not all these emotions aren't mine because they're not tied to the world. That's the thing about the south node is that it's like you, when the moon and the north node were in Scorpio together, it's like you could feel 
the whole of the world's emotions. So everyone kind of got to feel what Scorpio feels on a day to day basis, right? And then Scorpios kind of got it like double time, right? So that's why ever that's why over the last eighteen months or so it was intense to say the least, right? At least with this moon of Scorpio, it breathes a little bit of a sigh of relief because you only you can only you only feel your deep emotions, right? Only your deep emotions. But also just recognizing how those emotions and how you feel can in fact affect other people around you if you let it just kind of leak out, if you will, right? So I think Monday is going to be a day, like I said, where we're still building up this energy. We are, of course, dealing with the Mercury that's uh, slowing down, pretty much stopped at this point. So at the degree that's going to retrograde, Mars is still getting to the opposite, the exact opposition with Neptune. We have the square of Venus and Jupiter. While it's a nice, you know, it's like it's an interesting square because you know. Venus is at, a, is at a degree that it likes to be at, numerological wise, because it's uh, one plus five is six, and that's the number that it likes to be at. That's what it represents in numerology. And, you know, Venus likes to be in Taurus, and Venus is in the Deccan ruled by Jupiter. So this is not the most difficult square. The most difficult part of the square is whether or not you can recognize what you already have right now, whether or not you can recognize your value and whether or not you do value yourself and whether or not you do embrace like, you know what, I am, this is sort of like a, okay, yeah, do you like, it's like a put up or shut up kind of moment. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, like, do you really value yourself? Like if someone compliments you, are you like super bashful about it and you almost tell them to not compliment you or do you accept that compliment? You don't have to be boastful about it. But do you accept and embrace that compliment? And you're like, thank you. I appreciate that. You know, I am good at this. Not be like, oh, I'm not the, I mean, you could go the tremble. I was like, you know, yes, thank you. I am the best. I am the best. Everyone knows it. Everyone knows it. That I'm the best. Like you could do that route if you wanted to, but just confident. It's like, you know what? Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that compliment. I am really good at this. Some people, it's hard for them to do that because they've been conditioned to be overly humble. You don't want to be overly humble. You still want to be humble to God, right? And walk in faith, if you will. That's the thing that kind of was in repeat in my head over this weekend is walking by faith. But you don't want to be so, so humble to where you make yourself diminutive and you can't become a leader in your own life and you can't move without the approval of other people. You don't want to, you don't want to do that either, right? We all need support. We all need encouragement. But you don't want to get to the point where you just absolutely need the approval of other people. That's the south. That's the dark side that we're going to see with the south node, with the with the moon and Libra. Is that this just deeper urge to just have the approval of so many people before we actually move and take any action? Because we're afraid to take the action, and not only that, but Chiron's there, so it's going to look weird. Maybe the action looks weird. Maybe you want to. Maybe you've always wanted to dye your hair a certain color, but now you're afraid to do so, especially because maybe dyeing your hair is going to have people think that you're associated with certain groups of people that you're not really associated with. But maybe you just want to dye your hair and who cares what people think? That's another part about this, too, you know. So anyways, let's get into the cards, shall we? I'm using a couple of different decks today from what I have been using, so... I'm using Sacred Traveler's Oracle uh, deck. And then this one, I think it's called the Line Strike deck. It's one of my more psychological decks, in a sense, you know? Because it has, like, these, like, ink blocks stuck on the back and stuff. So I think that's kind of cool. So this was actually a deck that my wife bought me. So I wanted to make sure that I showed this deck some love because I haven't used it in a while, so... And I can definitely tell <laughs> the energy of the deck is like, oh, okay. All right. So let's let's hop into what the cards will be for today. I'm probably going to make some other video later. Um, because I wanted those a couple different things, probably just like a maybe like a mini update, if you will. Um but yeah, that'll probably come later, maybe tonight or tomorrow or something like that. So 
All right, let's see. What do we have here? Well, interesting enough, we do have the Seven of Swords here, upright. We have the Seven of Swords upright. We also have the King of Pentacles in reverse, right? And that is followed by the Ace of Wands in reverse. The Ace of Wands in reverse. No one told you to go and be duplicit. No one really told you to go and no one really told you to go into battles that you really didn't really have any business going into. The way I see this is the King of Pentacles was here and you have the Ace of Wands here. And the, the story I'm getting is that the King of Pentacles kind of sent down an order, if you will, to do something. And the order is the Ace of Wands. So wanted to invoke some sort of action. And the Seven of Swords here upright is sort of feeling like we took upon this order, if you will, from the king. And it didn't really play. It didn't really go the way that we thought because we end up feeling backstabbed. We end up feeling like people were whispering behind our backs. This is definitely a moon conjunct the seven and the Libra kind of deal. Um, and we can feel like we're not necessarily a part of the group. We can feel like, you know, we're on the outside that someone is really trying to stab us in the back, if you will. But I think really what this comes down to is that we misinterpreted what the King was saying. So this comes down to is like, you know what? We have to be able to alter our perspective on this. And then once we alter our perspective, we'll realize that no one's really tr out to just get us. Everyone's vying for position, I guess, in this life. It's like a game of musical chairs. And sometimes when we aren't the one sitting in the chair, we can feel like, oh, shit, well, I'm not part of the game anymore. Well, that's okay. You can go off and play another game. Just because you're not playing that game of musical chairs anymore. And maybe you feel like someone did something, like, you know, pretty, like, pretty fucked up and maybe like as you're about to sit down they pulled the chair real fast and they took it for themselves and then you freaking fell and you're like hey he changed the rules he changed the rules of the game and he just pulled it out that wasn't fair unfortunately life ain't fair sometimes honey but that doesn't that doesn't mean it's like you know what you can stay there and you can ruminate and you can get pissed you can just sit there and just fester or you can move on and do something different you know I think this comes down to like we have to, you know. I like this card because it shows like this this horned owl, right? Which does kind of give me it is Leo vibes, but it kind of gives me Sag vibes, honestly, with the owl there too, because it's about having the vision. So, but it's reverse, and then of course you have this Ace of Wands here, which has a fox uh, embedded into the image, right? So it's like you know, what? are we questioning our own vision, if you will? Um, do we trust the vision that may come from like a higher source? You know what I'm saying? And there can be this feeling that's like, oh, well, maybe we were told to do a certain thing and it, maybe it led to this seven of swords kind of energy. And then we're like, well, fuck, why would I, why would I trust this energy? But sometimes it's like, sometimes life is like that. Sometimes we may take advice and it doesn't go exactly with the way that we thought. And someone's running off with our swords, if you will. Go and make a new sword. I'm going to draw another card for a little bit more clarity. Yeah, we have the Nine of Wands in reverse. So there's definitely this feeling where, you know, this sort of like we're feeling like we're having to prepare for something or defend ourselves against something. But with it being reverse, this, this is not really a time to just be overly cautious and like overly just preparing for something bad to happen. This is a time to just go for it. And like if something doesn't go the way that you want, kind of keep it moving. Not that you should just suppress what you're feeling, but just keep it moving because there's no point in just sitting there and festering. The, you have people to see, things to do, and you have a lot more value than you realize, you know? So, like I said, this energy is kind of hard to put into words, you know? So, we do the best that we can, but it is definitely a pressure cooker kind of time. All of these retrograde energies the sun that's about to move into Virgo, with a Mars is about to move into a sign that it doesn't want to be in, right? Ironically, a moon in Scorpio that doesn't feel as bad. How crazy is that? It's insane. Put the thunk it. Grace and gratitude. Through gratitude, joy expands. I'm telling you, like, this is really what's going to help out. It's just like having gratitude 
and just realizing what we do have and being thankful for what we do have. That's what it comes down to. So that's going to do it for your astrology forecast today. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. I know that this reading was a little bit all over the place, and hopefully I got the message across about the day. If anything, the message, like the fact that it came out this way and was a bit all over the place, and me trying me collecting my thoughts as I was putting this together kind of paints the picture of the energy right now. So have some grace on yourself. Have some grace on yourself, like the card says. Have some grace on yourself. Be easy on yourself. And find those things to be grateful for. So, but anyways, y'all take care. Stay blessed. If you like a personal reading with me, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care. Stay blessed. And I'll see you on the next video. Peace.